in that old eternal way. But the when I shall not divulge. <laughs> no. I'll keep that hug close to my chest like a sick cat. <laughs> Once this was a playhouse. And before that a bear pit. On a hot day I swear you could still smell the bears. They used to rag me. <laughs> that ain't the bears, the last of gentlemen. But there was the bears because upon occasion as I swept I came across their hair. Tufts of it bunched up in the corners, which I saved. As a small child, my father was a bear keeper. I remember the bears moaning at night and licking their throats at the wounds where the iron's cutting and sighing. For a while, the bears loved to dance. I hate to do it for a whip. Indeed, under those conditions, I believe they preferred the fighting to the dancing even as blood was spilt and death faced. Sometimes I still hear their cries, very faint, even in the wind. Doll? Doll, is that you, Doll? I'm cold. I swear I've never been so cold. <laughs> it ain't funny, Doll. Well, let's have a bit of your fire. You ain't changed. I fancy something. I fancy a hot chocolate, warm and frothy in a silver cup. There ain't none here, your ladyship. I'll ring a bell. There ain't no bell. No bell? How'd you change the scenes then? You're slow, ain't you? This is an odd place. Dark, dark and it stinks. Here, doll, we're not. Are we? Oh, no, doll, no. Oh, no, doll, no. Aren't I at rest then? I'll play for you, we perform this night, for no greater cause. Than your delight. This is a dream. One more and forget my lines. We ask alone but one small favour. That you critics have some sweet flavour. Because heaven be praised is not so wise an age. But that your own follies may supply the stage. Oh, stop it, doll, stop it. We need a priest, doll, a priest. <laughs> you had a bell, you bleeding liar. A oh, priest! <laughs> And lo, it is written in our Lord's book, and ye have only to look about ye, and ye will see that it has come to pass. Yes, it hath. All right, all right, in a bleeding minute. Ye shall see that the cows do not give sweet milk, but are dry except for stinking curdles. Ye shall find all men to be cheats, and their hair to be lice riddled. Yea, ye shall discover even the women in your heart to be fornicators. I'm having a fucking break. And the great plague of locusts will settle in the fields and pester your cows. You crying? Don't take it personal, I always shout. Usually I take round the hat. Just then I was making it up. Could you tell? Seemed all right. He was my dad, the preacher. It was last rites or some with the plague. He said God was protecting him and then just last week when it all seemed to be over, the boils came up purple behind his knees. This morning I thought I'd best just carry on, you know. This was our spot. How much did you get today then? Well, I've not earned a penny. What am I going to do? I could starve. That's because you don't know how to work the crowd. I sold oysters with my sister. We had patter. Crowds like patter. Patter? You know, oyster suckers better than sucking a... God's <laughs> plain and holy word. It's like you've got to have a bit of cunning. Cunning? I'm not sure. I think cunning's against my religion. God helps those who help themselves. I got myself a job at the cock and pie. 
I've heard about places like that. Ah, sir, strong waters to the gentleman. I've heard it's the devil's own armpit. Well, you do get the odd difficult customer. There was this one bloke, he wouldn't take no for an answer. I told him I wouldn't go with him, not for a sixpence. Oh, I know where he's been. And where's that? With my sister. <laughs> <laughs> She'd do anyone. <laughs> well, I better go. It's four o'clock. That's when I used to wash my dad's collars. No point washing them now. You never liked washing them, did you? No, it's just I can't think what else to do. Do you know poetry? I'll give you a sixpence if you teach me a bit of poetry. Poetry? Can you say it? The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> that ideal then, you won't starve now. Not today. Why do you want to know poetry? For a job. At the cock and pie? No, across the street, the playhouse. The playhouse? That den of defilement, that pit of pestilence. I've seen the ladies, they've got lovely dresses. Have they? I crept in the back. The candlelight shines on their hair, so their hair looks like flames. Glittering buckles on their shoes, gold lace dresses. Lace? Do they... fornicate? Fuck <laughs> knows. <laughs> Speak poetry and walk about. <laughs> and they want... Ladies? Just one. Just one. Oh. I heard them talking in the pub. Teach me now! I need to fetch things. A book of poetry for my lodging. I'll come with you! No, you wait here. I'll wait then. Here, I don't know your name. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Farley. And I'm Nellie. Nellie Gwynn. You can stop your boxy job! Liz! Liz! I'm Mrs. Farley to you. Mrs. Farley then! What do you want? It's the same thing as before, Lizzie. Uh, Mrs. Farley. I've told you. You've got to have the right way about you, and you just haven't got it. What way? You've got to have a bit of breeding, elegance, class. What about my poem? You're never satisfied. That's your trouble. My advice is to forget it. You don't want to lead a life of disappointment, do you? I'm going to ask Mr. Betterton. I'll get someone else to tell us a poem, and I'll say that and show my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Betterton has all the girls he needs. He took on two last week. Extras. You never told me. Well, he can't see everyone, otherwise he'd spend his whole life auditioning. You don't want me to be one. An actress. The theatre has to have some standards. If it didn't, where would I be? Begging or starving? Now, I've got to get on. I can't stand here all day chatting. You'll thank me one day. Oh, I fucking won't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? No right. I'm gonna say something. No. Bastard! Poxy prick! You are no gentleman! Is there anyone here who can him through? I have a mind to see his gut! Shut up! He started it! Shut up! Pointing at me! Slandering me! I expect his lordship's a little inebriated. He's pissed as fuck! You don't want trouble. You're making a show of yourself. <coughs> Miserable, chasing impotent swine! Good evening. <laughs> Whore, he called me. It's his vengeance. Vengeance? But it's me who should have the vengeance. Oh. What? You get that sort of behaviour off an earl I've noticed? It's just their way. <laughs> He'll keep on and on at you like a wolf at a carcass. He'll never let up. Why was he shouting? He used to come in here. He paid to watch us changing. What, me? I ain't taking nothing off in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> then he wanted to have me. She didn't fancy it. He was a dog. But he persisted, so I said, marry me and I'll do it. Thinking he'd go cock his leg up another tree. But he agreed. He agreed. So I borrowed a costume. Desdemona, wouldn't it? And I met him at a church in a small country village. Lewisham. <laughs> we were married by a priest. He had his night. And when I woke up the next morning, he was gone. Gone? Scarpered. The priest was no priest. He was a bleeding actor. I knew I'd seen his face. Earls. They go to any length. They got time on their antsy. I complained to the king. Good luck that did. Lie, 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 I said. And now? I'm publicly insulted. Hounded. If I wanted to, could I borrow a costume? I was just asking. 
He could ruin you, coming in here, heckling. I've seen it before. He'll get bored. Will he? I could talk, settle it. You've got trouble. I'll settle it. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. <laughs> But I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed its brains out like so sworn as thou have done to this. Lord. <laughs> a fellow began to shake. He was in the front row there, shook from head to foot and crossed himself. It's the way your eyes burn. Eyes are the windows to the soul. A lot of it's in the eyes. Mr. Betterton swears by them. What do you want doing today then? Widow. It's the black then. I'll get the black out. I don't like to say nothing, but I feel I must. Our costumes, they am what they were. We haven't got the money to cast to the Four Winds. This is the theatre. But Mrs. Betterton had a new costume delivered Friday. With feathers, Mr. Betterton has given his life's blood to this company, Doll Common, let me remind you. I am reminded. One's life's blood is one's very heart and soul. Sat breath everything. No offence intended, ma'am. Sometimes I wonder what happened to a person if they lost it. That thing one gives one's life's blood for. I've never had the chance to give nothing. I'm always a dead one, under the cloak. Or else I'm sweeping. I imagine it would be terrible. Terrible. Still, I'm not complaining. We've never had you can't miss. We better go in and fix you up. Just another minute. Have you ever noticed how quiet it is? as if the air is resting. The raven himself is horse that crooks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. I want to do that. Who's there? Will you teach me how to do it? Mrs. Betterton hasn't got time to waste on the likes of you. So get going. I said a poem. I said it and Mr. Betterton said I was to have a go, saying something. A line? Yeah. You never mentioned it to me. A line, he said. Well, I suppose there's a few lines going. Nothing fancy. I've only got 14 myself. Have you any rural experience? Me mum kept a hen. Well then, there's the lusty shepherdess. I'll take anything. Here stroll I the live long day, watching my fellows fork the hay. Here stroll I... And now I must prepare myself. Some of us have preparation to do. Here stroll I the live long day, <coughs> watching my fellows fork the hay. Never underestimate the value of opening one's mouth while speaking. When we go a long way in the theatre with an open mouth. <laughs> and not just in the theatre! Here's Joel I, the live long day, watching my fellows book! A word. Stillness. Stillness. Here's Joel I, the live long day, watching my fellows fork the hay. See? Oh, yeah. A simple technique which may upon occasion be used to stunning advantage. As a child, I was encouraged to sit still for long periods of time. I found that invaluable. I never sat still. I had worms. <laughs> <laughs> you may have also noticed that my head was at 20 to 11. Your head? If you imagine the stage of the clock, I shall demonstrate. Submission is well expressed at 6 o'clock. Shame at 20 to 7. Despair at 5 past 12, not to be confused with heavenly abandonment at midday exactly. <coughs> Death by strangulation is one of the only occasions on which an actress may employ a quarter to three. <laughs> I see. The best way for an artist to improve her craft is by careful observation of a seasoned and expert colleague. You may observe me. Thank you. Follow on. You are honoured in joining a profession of much heart and great decorum. Uh, after me. And just remember, for every queen there are 30 friends at the banquet. <laughs> I laughed and laughed and laughed. I couldn't stop laughing. He drank down a whole flask and the rest of them beat the tables with their fists. The noise was deafening. And then this woman came in. You should have seen the state of her. She had a black eye and her hair was matted. And she had bare feet. And they got her to sing in front of the king. Only she couldn't sing a note. And I laughed so much I cried. I don't know where they got her. Off the streets, I think. And I never went home last night. I went somewhere else. What did you do? 
Nothing. I sent word to the Earl of Oxford asking for a meeting. I waited in. And? I got bored and went out. To a salon. A what? A salon. In some very nice rooms with uh, interesting people. <laughs> Philosophers, wits, poets. You drink coffee and you talk. Talk? About what? Ideas, thoughts, discoveries. They now know that the human heart has four separate compartments. Ugh. It's science. And what do they want you there for? I'm an actress. They've never had one of those before. I'm a novelty. They ask me things. Ask you things? About plays. About me. <laughs> about life here. How we strut and fret our hour upon the stage. It's the sort of place you can say anything. I've said things I never even knew I thought. And people listened. I never went home last night. I stayed away all night. And I went somewhere else. And I'm going there again. Go ahead. I'm new. Speak. Uh, I'm new! You. <laughs> Engaged by Mr. Betterton for a tryout. Here I stroll! <laughs> She's not with me, is she? Mrs. Marshall. Mrs. Farley. Miss Gwynne. The latter follows on the former, it's all easily done. Well, well. She better be proficient. Oh. See to it, doll. An audience's place is in the auditorium. Goodness only knows what the attraction is back here. One can only wonder. <laughs> like flies around a shit. Pot. Um, bugger off! You're not coming in here! There are ladies changing in here. You can wait till after. Bill after cost ya. <laughs> <laughs> I won't listen to me. I got no respect for the body. <laughs> Shut up, you rollicking load of bulls, you red fuckwits! <laughs> I've got a good one for swearing. <laughs> we had it where I used to work. Turn it, bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Show me your petticoats. What for? Show me. <laughs> what a rat. What's wrong with it? It's beautiful. A gift from an admirer. It's fucking beautiful. You could wear this in a palace. Yeah. An actress has to have the correct accoutrement. People don't want to pay to see that. It's like paying to see a dishcloth. Well, he didn't mention accoutrement at the auditions. So. He didn't. He did me. Liar. What? We work hard for what we've got. We don't need amateurs like you to ruin it for I us. I won't ruin it! You don't know what it's like. Hundreds of faces staring at you. You don't know what the science is like before you speak. King's in today. He's not. Yes. He's come to see me. He thinks I look continental. He gave me this. I've been to the palace. There's special stairs around the back. They give you a candle and up you go. Next, I'm getting shoes. Shoes? Are you going to tell on me? Too late. You're wrong. Follow me on shortly. Don't muck it up. You look like a bleeding ghost. Come on. <coughs> well, say something. <laughs> Turn it, bollocks! <laughs> God. <laughs> I waited for hers and she just stood rooted to the spot. She kept doing funny things with her head. She should have been at 20 to 6. <laughs> Mr. Betterton has made a rare error in choosing her. No, he hasn't. You could hardly call her a natural. Seems so. 
she has allowed personal feelings to destroy her performance. Mr. Betterton once said an entire English army with a thorn in his foot. He never manifested a twinge. Later, I had to dig it out with a cheese knife. <laughs> he never chose her. You did. I? She lied. She never saw him. Never saw him? She said she was to have a line. That is what she said, didn't she? I took it with a pinch of salt. I am thunderstruck. Mr. Betterton! He will not be gratified. You could have said something. I have gone over his head by misadventure. Lord, Lord. And with royalty in. And it's us that look like fools. Terrible! A line, she said! You show me a right up, you silly cow! Beg your job back and you will starve. I'm afraid you will not do. Imposter! I couldn't do it! You lot buggered off and left me! I told you, didn't I? Everything swayed as if it was wind in a forest. And I felt like a small thing that the wind was carrying. And then a thought came into my head like a shout. It said, do something and fucking hurry up about it. So I danced a little jig which I made upon the spot. And suddenly, all the whistling and hissing stopped. And then someone clapped. And then they all clapped. They laughed and clapped. They laughed and clapped. I felt like I had fire inside of me. All whiskey. <laughs> A reprieve. He may even keep you. Will he? There's no accounting for taste. Or for a jig. Well, well, it's not turned out too badly. For her. I'm sure I've appeared to greater advantage. <laughs> That's what they're like. Animals. They get a sniff of it and they go wild. I'll see to it. I didn't mind the faces. I liked them, like warm moons shining at me. And in a special box, a man in glitter cheering. A man in glitter. The king. Well, he couldn't have been cheering. How's the face? <laughs> it's the same one you went on with. <laughs> Is it smudged? <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are bad. I can't do details. <laughs> The Scottish one. Soon, soon. Rest assured. I like her. She's horrible. <laughs> if I asked you a question, would you give me an honest answer? Cross my heart and spit on a corpse. <laughs> Am I old? Uh, no. Good. <laughs> well, not compared to me. Mr. Betterton said we are getting older. I could hardly believe he was talking to me. This is the most wonderful scene. The Queen has become a child. She sings rhymes. Why did she go mad, doll? She killed a couple of geezers. It done her head in. <laughs> Could be. Could be. What, what are you doing here? It's Sunday. I need that. What? It's a company asset. Give it to me. Oh, don't get vicious. Nothing. Yeah, looks like nothing. <laughs> I didn't think there'd be anyone here. Me and Mrs. Betterton been practicing lines, and she's taken a knife to theatrical property. <laughs> I hope you're not entertaining the notion of leaving this establishment attired in thespian habiliments. What? In your costume. Mr. Betterton has prohibited the wearing of such apparel outside of working hours. I've got a rendezvous. An extremely important rendezvous. I can't go in rags. Shall I get off her? 
I got three long nails. <laughs> Such a strategy may entail further damage to company property. I'm surprised we don't go around naked on the pittance we get here. We are artists. Artists work for the love, love of their craft. Artists would work for nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's a calling. You can't live on a calling. Air's the only thing that's free and you can starve on that. People come here, highborn and low, they come to our establishment to partake in the sublime. To see real actors perform. Real actors. I'm real, aren't I? You? You are free to spend your free time as you choose, but not in our costume, so kindly remove them now. You can't tell me what to do. This is tedious. They don't come to see you. They come to see us. Us? Don't take no notice of her. Us? The young ones with decent legs. They can't get enough of it. They don't even see you. Not really see. Everyone knows. They see me. Of course they do. Don't take no notice of her. What does she know? Mrs. Betterton has been here every day of her life, even when it closed down. I've seen her up all night with lines. I've seen her wash her hands a thousand times. So she can sit on stage and you believe her. It's all right, Dom. I am aware. I am aware there are those types, the types that come for flesh. But I am dumbstruck for you. Sorry for you. Sorry for me. If you have not had the joy. I'm going now. There's a carriage waiting for me. I've got a rendezvous. You've probably never had one of those. Liz, Liz! Not now, I'm late. But Liz! I can't stop now. I was told to give you this. A man gave it to me to put in your hand. The man? A messenger. She said to tell you, parting gift. Parting gift? And this is all he gave you? Yeah. Are you sure? Sure. Are you sure that's what he said? Yeah. Never mind. What do you know? There. What is it? Okay. Ain't it good, a little man, a little wax man? Homunculus. He's got a little mouth, his mouth's open like a cry. Ugh, I ain't touching it, he's got hair melted on the top. I had a lock of his hair, the Earl of Oxford. He gave it to me, love token. Rebecca Marshall, what are you doing now? That is evil. I'm sticking a pin in the bastard's neck. That's for the shit rubbed into my hair. It's gone right through. That's for crying whore. He will be in pain. He'll be in bleeding agony. That's his bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Round about the cauldron go. In the poison entrails throw. Toad that under cold stone. Days and nights has thirty-one. Swelled as sweeping venom got. Boil thou first in charmed pot. Fill it of a fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newton, toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worm sting. Lizard's leg and howlet's wing. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Never prosper. He was my keeper. Now look at him. You need a keeper. You won't get another one. I don't want another one. I have <coughs> used him once. You wouldn't have known me. I used to creep about. He'd like me to be quiet. I need a drink. If he doesn't want me, someone else will, right? Of course. I went to a salon last night. Someone remarked that he'd never known of so much interest in the theatre. Not since us actresses had arrived. I need a drink too. You come in? In a bit. I shall not be joining you. We have old friends for supper. I fancy a bit sweeping. <laughs> I had a message too from the man. He said there's a carriage outside and I may use it at my own convenience for special stairs. Well, what do you think, Dal the King? Life is like a storm. That's what I think. Don't get in its way. 
It don't matter what anyone does, we all end up dead meat, don't we? Well, you look on the bleeding dark side, doll. No. It's your trouble. Anyway, I decided I'll go. Well, just this once, mind. I'm an actress, not a tart. <laughs> No choice in the matter. You've been lucky enough hanging on this long. Help me. What do you mean? You know. You don't want to do that. Who asked you? I want you to do it. No. Please, you've got to. I knew a woman weren't too rotted inside after. Shut up, doll. It's not too late, is it? It's never too late. Have you seen it done before? No. I've seen it done. Sit down. Get a cloth. Is that for blood? No. You put it in your mouth and bite on it. And now you need something sharp. Long and sharp. Here. Queen's Scrooge. Give us your arm. Ow! <laughs> That's nothing. Still want it done? Someone hold my hand. Valuable accoutrement. Well? It's very pretty, but not to my particular taste. I'd only use it as a snot rag. It's hardly worn. What's the matter? Superstitious, I said, it's hardly worn. I'll buy it. You keep it. How long are you going to live with a petticoat for? Maybe you should have a care. One day your luck might run out. A petticoat never saved anyone. One spoon bent in need of straightening. See to it, doll. One spoon. <laughs> um, one soil jerkin? That's not ours. Ain't it? No, it's theirs. From the men's tiring room, they slipped it into our sack. Bleeding cheek. It's an old trick. I'll soil it some more and slip it back. That's what I'd do. One Megan maggot ridden corpus's finger. Oh God! Oh, my mistake. It's an old bread roll. I've been looking for that. <laughs> Some beads and a few, a few scraps of fur. That's it. The rest are curtains. From today, I shall not be attending the theatre on a regular basis. Oh God! Mr. Betterton has talked to me. Well, you never said. I was awaiting my moment. <coughs> Timing. Timing. 
Some young actresses must be given a chance. Of course. For your partner, Mr. Betterton. Your partner's for many years. Many years. She's not moving. Leave her. Mrs. B! Mrs. B! <laughs> we'll have to tell Mr. Betterton. No! Then he'll never let her come again. Mrs. Betterton! Mrs. Betterton! I used to work in the wardrobe. And I used to watch and watch and wonder what it would be like, you know, to... What? Do it. The acting. I used to help my husband with his lines. And naturally, I learned them too. And one day, he was playing Othello and his Iago fell sick. Ate something disagreed with him at pork pie, anyway. Mr. Betterton was caught short. Could not find anyone else at such little notice to play the part. Except for me. I'd read with him many times. We knew that it would mean trouble with the bishops, me being a woman, but we were younger and reckless and we thought no one would ever know. Well, what happened? We got away with it. We were very close, Mr. Betterton and I. We were partners for many years. When he told me it was over, I swear, he had tears in his eyes. I'd never seen him cry before. Except, of course, when the part required it. You better go home, Mrs. B. I'm waiting. You better wait at home. I've never missed a cue. We know that. We know. You can't stay here. And I shall approach my husband once more for tomorrow's <coughs> performance. I am not above a woman selling artichokes. First time I was ever in a theatre, I saw her. Somehow she just knew how to do things. Even the business with the bloody clocks. Fate is a wicked thing. You don't have pity on no one. <laughs> business if I had. It's not me. It's them. They're not doing their job properly. The blokes aren't coming out excited. They're coming out limp. They're not coming out looking for it. I should be in there. Not outside. thing is, I'm better now, better than I was, that's the pity of it. I've learned things out here, I've got to act like you like it, love it even. You learn that, out here I'm a real. I left it. I had to. Little white body. Laid it on some steps. Not to cry when I left it. I'm going to go and find a gutter or a corner and lie down. Not in the street. Yes. Right here in the street. It's getting dark. Dark. looks out the window. 
Or Caesar. Feeding off the leavings. Oh, don't be morbid. Do my hair. Do it yourself. You watch it. Well, it ain't for a part, is it? I'm going out. Well, I ain't employed to tie you up for some private shenanigans. I'll do it myself then. What are you hanging around for? <coughs> I'm doing things. For all errands, things to collect up. Breaks my heart. And I have to give it a part. To her. Who? Her. Here you are. Assorted queens and wives. Faithful have a blue star and unfaithful a red circle. Nell. Nell. We're no longer hirelings. Starlings. <laughs> hirelings. Hirelings. We're shareholders. It's been agreed we have shares. Oh, you said starlings. <laughs> You don't have to go now to your rendezvous. It's arranged. Things have changed now. The point is, you don't have to go. I want to bloody go. Seed shifter. He wanted me to be a seed shifter. I told him I'm too old. I can't be doing with that. <laughs> Can you see me? I'm in a wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in love? Love? Go in there, it's exciting. I'm 16, I want to try things, new things. I'm lucky, I've always been lucky. People say I'm beautiful, but so are lots of girls. So why me and the king? I have this thing I do, I imagine what I want and then I get it. I imagine things too. Freedom, not having a keeper. And you got it, we're different, that's all. I'm free to do what I want and you are too. Free? To play a faithful wife or an unfaithful wife? <coughs> a whore? A mistress? We play at being what we are. Where's the freedom in that? How do you mean? But now I'm none of those things. So what am I? It tastes a fucking horse piss. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink it if you don't like it. Now we've got the chance to be something new. Different, don't you see? She ain't got no chances to be nothing. Stay out of it, doll. No chances left, that's the point. Don't take no notice of her. I'm gonna tell her. She's pissed. Tell me. Someone has stepped out of turn, said something, betrayed you. Betrayed me? He knows about the little wax man of the witchery? Who does? The Earl of Oxford. Who said? Oh, I never opened my mouth. But what can he do, the Earl? Well, they're still up to burning people. Burning them? Not a pleasant way to go. Oh, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> wouldn't he? He hates me. I have to go, I can see that. But we've got shares now. Shares? I'll have to live in some bloody cold place hidden, quiet, keeping my mouth shut. It won't come to that. What will it come to? You could start again someplace. Maybe he found a new word for me. Which? Before I could find one for myself. If they don't get you one way, they'll get you another. Don't say I've been here. Leave your past then. No! They're not having anything off me! I'll burn these. Good luck. Burn them? I better get a move on, I'm running late. Burn them, she said. Can't be right, Miss Spetterton's part. Oh, stop going on, you're pissed. Look out the window, see if there's a carriage for me. Oh, wish! <laughs> oh, wish! But it's all in vain. I wish I were a maid again. How do I look, doll? I can't see a carriage. I can see orange. Orange? Fucking hell, doll! There's a fire, doll! A fire! A fire! Whoa! Well, that's it! The end! Fuck! Help! Well, what we do? Shut up, I'm thinking. What we do now? Oh, we got to get out of here! What, leave here? Get moving! Well, where will we go? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm joining the Dukes. Oh, fuck!
I must have been dreaming or sleeping. How was your house? Oh, you know, lots of cushions. Oh, dear. No, no, I liked him. Everyone said she was very happy. On the whole, we had our problems, most couples do. I had my picture done, stark naked. He'd just sit and look at it for hours. Just him looking at me till the room would turn dark. I couldn't sleep some nights. The house seemed empty. Big places do. Sometimes I get restless. Restless. Still, I never did nothing I didn't want to, did I? Hey, doll. You don't see nothing, do you? Playhouse creatures, they called you. Like you was animals. Animals? Before this place turned to playhouse, it was a bear pit. My dad was a bear keeper. I hate to dance for a whip. One night this bear turned on him. The whip came down and down on her, but still she came. She slashed his chest from here to here. That night they took out her teeth and claws. Ripped him out and she howled and screamed and rocked in pain. It woke me and I ran in. There was blood on the floor. No, Dad, no, I says. And he said, you let one of them bears get away with it and tomorrow none of them bears will dance. And then the bear went still, and the head was hanging. Why should you whip her? I said. And took my hand and put it in the blood that was on the floor. And then wiped more on my face. She dances and we eat meat, he says. And never let me hear you speak on it again. The blood was warm at first. And it started to turn cold on me. I swear it turned me cold. I never did say nothing again. Playhouse creatures, they called you. Like you was animals. But we spoke, and we was the first. And where did it get you? I'm gonna do an epilogue. Do it with us, for old time's sake. Can't remember no epilogues. My mind is prone to wander. We'll make one up. I'm gonna dedicate it to Mrs. Betterton. Mrs. B. Yeah. She'd have liked that. Yeah. Look around, doll. It's just us. Those promises we made, they're old now. Dust. Now we can say what we like. What will we say? Anything. Now we can say anything. Oh. Um.